All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife, and really it's a companion video to the article that I have on this knife. So make sure you go to the link in the description and check out the article on this knife for more information and source materials and things like that. But this knife was brought in by a kid who trains in the classes at the jiu-jitsu school that I teach at. And I'm always happy to have anyone bring in a knife to show me because I just enjoy getting to check them out, but especially when it's, you know, a younger person because I like to see younger people interested in knives like I was when I was younger. So uh, he brought in a few knives to show me and I noticed this one because I recognized that it looked like an imperial because of the construction and the general shape. But I also noticed that it had no nail nick or long pull on the blade and that the blade sat pretty low in the handle. And I had heard of trick knives. So this is a, an imperial trick knife. And so I was able to, to get it and open it. And uh, he had said that he had had trouble opening it, which makes sense because that's the trick. Um, but how you open this knife, the only way to open this knife is by holding it upside down like so. No matter how much you pulled, even if you could get a hold of this blade, you wouldn't be able to pull it open holding it normally. You have to turn it upside down, press into the blade, and then it pops out. And then you can just open it normally. And when I did get it open, funnily enough, uh, another you know youth student was watching, and I asked them what they thought this was, and the other kid said <laughs> a bottle opener. And actually, it makes a lot of sense because it does look a lot like a bottle opener. So. If you're familiar with the Great Eastern Cutlery number 25 beer load that they did recently, you can see that there is definitely a similarity in the look here. It's not exactly the same, obviously. This would have to be a very, very small bottle, but it is similar. But what it actually is, is a hook where a bar that goes across from one liner to the other engages when you close the knife. So I'm gonna see if I'm able to show you this and see if this is too, so you can see in there, there is a bar. And if I have it up right here, you can see when I turn it, it moves. Hopefully you can see that. So there it is and I turn it and it drops down. So it's actually just loose between those two liners. And what that does is when you hold it upright like this, because it is lower, you close the knife, it pushes past that hook and then actually locks it in place. So if I close the knife upright, it'll close, but then it won't reopen because that bar has gotten pushed up and then sank back down into that hook. So no matter how much I pull, if I pull it, it's pulling into that bar. Now, of course, I'm sure you could force it and break it, but with normal strength, not using pliers, you're not gonna be able to open this knife until you know the trick, which is to turn it upside down, and then that bar drops down so that you can push and it pops open. So it's a really interesting design, and uh, it's something where it's pretty much a novelty. Now, is there much of a reason why you would want your knife to be locked closed, but not locked open? Probably not. In the advertising for this knife, they even talked about only the most uh, calm or even tempered person will be able to open this knife on their first try until they know the trick. And, you know, there is one kind of use case that I can see where you might want to have your knife lock closed and that is if you have you know if you don't want someone to open it without you knowing especially if you have you know a, a kid or a baby or something around and you don't want them to be able to open the knife but I think it's pretty much a novelty now on the other hand one thing that I find really interesting is that it's actually relatively similar to how a axis or crossbar lock works so the crossbar kind of is the opposite. It gets pushed by a spring upwards into the tang of the blade, and then you can pull it back down and it holds it closed with a detent. Now I'm not saying that it necessarily inspired the crossbar lock or the axis lock, whatever you want to call it, but I can kind of see it being a very, 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 very early version of it. So 
Uh, I don't think that necessarily it actually did inspire it, but it's just interesting to see the similarity. And it's a very interesting thing. Now, these are actually patent numbers on the tang of the, the blade here, but they have nothing to do with this system. It seems that they didn't patent or didn't try to patent it. Uh, so I find that pretty interesting because it is so um, unique and different. But these knives were pretty inexpensive. Um, they were actually used as advertising knives. So you could see like companies use them as an advertising knife with their name here on the scales or the covers. Uh, you also saw some like pure novelty knives like uh, Roy Rogers and things like that different you know kind of graphics on the, the covers here but I just think it's really cool it's an interesting part of knife history because it's so different from what we have today you know everything today in these modern knives you can open it with one hand very easily and it locks open uh, but it doesn't lock closed that's kind of the whole point you can open it one-handed without trouble it locks open and then you know not closed and this is the opposite it locks closed and it's not obvious how you open it but what you do again turn it upside down press into the blade that lets that spring uh, that bar fall it's not spring loaded there's no spring on that bar the only spring is the back spring then you can open it if you close it upside down it hits that so you do have to turn it this way and then it will lock itself back close. So a really, really interesting knife. Um, I really have enjoyed getting to check it out. Again, go check out the article where I talk a little bit more about this knife and the mechanism. And thank you to Jerem for allowing me to check out this very, very cool heirloom from uh, his grandfather. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell and select all so you know when I post new videos. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.